Today I thought I would create a little tutorial on how to make basic current measurements in a simple circuit. So let's do that using a resistor, an LED, and a battery. Boy, that thing's big <laughs> compared to the other components. Let's line these up here a little bit. I'm going to put the resistor down here. Okay. So those are all the components we need for a simple circuit, and we can use this circuit to practice making some current measurements. So let me just connect some wires here from the negative terminal to the resistor, and then from the resistor to the LED. Now the resistor does not have polarity. It doesn't matter which way you connect that, but the LED does have polarity. So you'll have to get the correct leg connected to the negative terminal and you have to get the correct leg connected to the positive terminal. But the beauty of this simulation software is you don't have to know which is which. You can just try it and if it doesn't work you can swap the leads. I can tell you that if you hover over this it will tell you, let me get rid of this wire, I'm going to click on it, hit my delete key. If you hover over that lead it tells you it's the anode, and if you hover over this one, it tells you it's the cathode. Well, the cathode is the negative side, the anode is the positive side. If you know that, fantastic. Or if you want to look it up before you connect a circuit, that's a smart thing to do. But you don't need to know here, so I'm just going to run the wire. It's convenient. It looks like the wire will look good if I just run it that way. And then we'll just st uh, start the simulation and we'll see if it works. Okay, and then I'm going to run another wire from this terminal, and then I'm going to run it down to the positive side of the battery. And let's make that a little bit neater. And now we could change the wire colors too to represent the polarity, but let's do that in a minute because I know my polarity is wrong here. But let's try it. Let's just run the simulation and see if it works. So I'll start the simulation, and the LED does not light. And easy troubleshooting, you can just swap some wires around, but I happen to know that I've got the two, the polarity wrong here. But if you don't know the difference, you just swap it and see what happens. That's what's so wonderful about this software. In the real world, the LED won't care if you connect it incorrectly, if you get the polarity wrong, but many other electronic components will care, and you'll burn them out if you connect them wrong. So you want to be more careful in the real world. But in the simulation world, uh, you don't have to worry about that. So let's just swap these wires. I'm going to just get rid of this one. And then I know the positive terminal has to go up here to the anode. So I am just going to click on it to reveal the connector points here. And then what I can do is just click and hold and drag it over. Now that's too messy for me. I'm going to double click to put another uh, point in here. And then I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. What are we going to do here? How's that? And then I'm going to run a wire from the resistor to the other leg. I'm going to go up here and click once so that I can change direction and click again. And it's not as neat as I would like it to be, but uh, <laughs> at least there's not any confusion about which wire is going where. So let's run the simulation again and see what happens. Oh, look at that. The LED lit up. So we got the polarity right this time. And this situation bothers me a little bit. I'm going to stop the simulation. I'm going to move the LED over here someplace and then I'm going to hit R on my keyboard to rotate it. And let's see if I can get these wires to look a little bit better. I can settle on the, the LED going this way. Then the wires will fit nicely. I don't like the backwards shape of the LED though. But let's go with it. What the heck. So now my wires can be a little bit neater. Is that critical? No, but if you get a lot of wires going on, it's very helpful. And if you want to present your circuit to somebody else, it's just going to look better. And who knows, you might even feel better about yourself with a neat layout. Okay, this one actually could be a little bit straighter too. Let's go for that while we're at it. There we go. Feeling much better about myself now. Now we can change the wires to more represent the polarity. Green is common for ground, but black is a little bit more common. So I'm going to click on that so that I can change the wire color. And if you've seen previous versions of Tinkercad, a uh, dialog used to come up here where you could choose the wire color. Well, they've moved that apparently over here because they've added some features.
so you can click the drop down up here and you can choose your wire color and you can also choose different kinds of wire connectors so you can use normal wiring or hookup wiring or alligator clips which are kind of cute or you can let the program decide which which connector it's going to use let's stick with normal now let's go get a multimeter so that we can measure current and pull that out here and to measure current your meter has to be in the circuit so we have to break the circuit and have the ammeter uh, in series with the rest of the components so I'm going to get rid of this lead actually I'm just going to click on it and drag it up here and then I whoops there we go and then I'm going to put a new lead in here and again the simulation circuit we don't care which polarity we've got here but in the real world this is one of those situations where you would want to be careful about this depending on your meter it might accept reverse polarity or you might burn your meter out so you want to be careful about that but in simulation software we don't care and this is actually a good thing you can practice in the simu simulation software and then you'll know the proper way to connect it uh, when you get out in the real world and connect it in a real circuit so let's run the simulation and see if it works. And we've got two issues here. We've got a minus sign and we're, we've got V for volts. We're measuring voltage right now. So we have to switch it to amps to measure current. And then we, in order to get rid of the minus sign, which isn't critical, we can live with it. But if we want to do this the right way, then we would reverse the polarity coming into this meter. So let me get rid of this lead and let me change this one over to the positive side of the meter and then let me reconnect this one to the negative side all right let's run that see how that goes there we got rid of the minus sign we're measuring amps the LED is lit so the circuit is intact and we've got seven milliamps going through this circuit and you could check that with Ohm's Law if you're a glutton for punishment, or you can just try some experimentation. So let's do that because that's the beauty of Tinkercad circuit uh, software. Oh, I was going to fix the wire color. So these actually are pretty good. Let's change the positive side. Uh, red is typically what you would use for the positive side of leads. So I think I have to, no, I don't have to stop the simulation. And let's change this one to red as well. And they used to have number indicators next to these, so you could just push a number on your keyboard to choose colors. So I think black is one, red is two, etc. Okay, look at that. There's a nice simple little way to measure the current in an easy circuit with a simple LED and a resistor. Let's try changing the resistor up and see what happens to the current. Let's stop the simulation. Well, maybe we can get away without stopping it. Let's find out. I'm gonna click on the resistor and right now it's at one kilo ohm, 1,000 ohms. Let's change that. What do we got here? Let's change it to one mega ohm and see what happens. And it lets me do it without stopping the simulation, so that's a wonderful thing. In a circuit in real life, you'd probably want to disconnect the power before changing components, but we can get away with a lot in simulation software. So we've changed this resistor to one mega ohm, so we've really increased the value from 1,000 to a meg and that then increases the resistance in the circuit reducing the current and our meter is telling us we have zero current right now but our LED is still lit a little bit and we can prove that let's go turn the simulation off and watch that LED so I'll click on that to stop the simulation and the LED does in fact go out so we are getting some current going through the circuit but the meter is not sensitive enough to be able to show us if this were a three digit display on the right of the decimal place we'd probably see a number there but not with this meter okay so we've made this resistor much bigger let's make it much smaller and see what happens so instead of going up let's go down so now we've got one ohm and we've got the uh, indicator that we've just blown up our LED because it's drawing too much current now because we don't have enough resistance we're not limiting the current enough and we've burned out our LED and if the LED were still intact, this meter shows us we'd be drawing 808 milliamps now. 
Red LEDs typically run on about 20 milliamps. So 800 is a whole lot more than 20. <laughs> and so we know that a one ohm resistor is too small. It does not limit the current enough. Oh, I didn't finish making my wires. Oh, I undid my wire collar. I'm going to push two on my keyboard. Didn't work. That's because I'm still running my simulation software. Let me, or my simulation. Let's try two again. There we go. That turned red now. Okay, where was I? Start the simulation, 800 milliamps, blown LED. In the real world, you'd have to replace that LED then, but in the simulation, you don't have to. All you have to do is just change your values. So let's change our value instead of one ohm. 1K is a thousand. So let's go half of that. Let's go to 500 ohms and see what happens. And now we've got 13.9 milliamps. Remember a minute ago I said that red LEDs typically like about 20 milliamps. So we're getting closer to the uh, preferred uh, current in uh, this circuit for a red LED. So we can keep tweaking that. Let's go up to 600 milliamps. Or 600 ohms, I'm sorry. And we've got um, 11, so we just dropped because I made the resistor bigger from 500 to 600. The resistance got greater. We're limiting the current more. We're dropping the current going through the circuit. So let's try 400 ohms. 17, let's try 300 ohms. 22 milliamps, so there we go. And look, now we've got a warning sign here. And let's zoom in and see what that says. Does that get any bigger? It doesn't get any bigger. <laughs> it says current through the LED is 22 milliamps. And they talk about the maximum being 20 milliamps, which is bogus, but uh, that's the nice, um, the nice amount of current you'd want to run through it is 20 milliamps. You can run more, but you may shorten the life. I've run 30 milliamps through these red ones with no problem. But 20, I'd stick with roughly 20 if I were doing it in a regular circuit. I wouldn't want to reduce the life of the LED by just getting a little bit more brightness out of it. Okay, so that's how we can change the current by changing the resistor. Another way that we could change the current is by changing the value of the, of the uh, power supply. In this case, it's a 9 volt battery. Uh, we can't vary this 9 volts, but we could put a power supply in there and then we could vary it. Let's try that. I'll stop the simulation and then I'm going to get another power supply in here. So I'm just going to type in here power. I don't know what they call it. Power supply? Yes. So I'm going to click on that, which didn't work. There we go. One of the space. Okay. So let's pull the power supply out and replace the battery with the power supply and then we can vary the voltage and we can watch our current change by varying the voltage instead of the resistance. So let's disconnect this wire and let's put it on the negative terminal of the power supply because it was on the negative terminal of the battery. Oops, I can't make my cute angles just yet. I have to connect it first. Come on, baby. Whoops, hit escape to get rid of that. Click the wire, click the little handle, drag it up here, wait for the square, let go, there we go. Then I can double click it and put another point in, then I can make my favorite angles. And then let's connect the red lead to the positive side of the power supply. And then I can clean this up a little bit. Let's make another connector or another angle here somewhere. Let's do it here and one more here. There we go. And then we can get rid of the battery. I click on it and then hit my delete key. All right, now let's change this up. Let's see what we've got going on. Let's um, start the simulation. And by default, Tinkercad applies five volts to the power supply. So we just had nine volts, so we got roughly half of that. So let's go back to uh, the 1K resistor. If I click on that resistor, let's go back to 1K. I'm gonna change that to one and K ohms, 1000 ohms. Remember we had seven milliamps before when we had the nine volt power supply and a 1K resistor in here. Now, instead of a nine volt supply, we've got five volts. So we got half the voltage roughly. So we should have half the current. 
roughly. So seven drop to three. And you can calculate all of this stuff, but it's certainly a lot easier just to play around with uh, Tinkercad if you're not gonna get real serious about it, if you're just experimenting. Okay, so we've learned that we want about 20 milliamps in this LED, so we could change the resistor or we can change the voltage. Let's go back up to nine volts here. I can just click on that and I can change the voltage to nine. So that's where we were with a nine volt battery and we can recall where we were. Again, seven milliamps with the 1K resistor and a nine volt power supply. Let's change that now. We're going for 20 milliamps, so we want to roughly double that. A little bit more than double will bring us close to 20 milliamps. So what we have to do is roughly double our voltage. So let's change that voltage from nine. Let's go, oh, let's try 20 volts. 17 milliamps, let's try 25 volts. 22 milliamps, let's try 23 volts. There we go, 20 milliamps. So there's how you can measure current by just getting your ammeter or your multimeter in series in the circuit, and then you can vary that current by changing your components. So we're getting the little warning signal here that our current's getting close to being too high. So let's turn our voltage down. You can turn this little knob to, let's turn our voltage down, get rid of that warning sign there and let's change this to 15 volts just to be a little higher so we got 13 milliamps which tinkercad does not warn us is a dangerous amount and then i'm just going to click in a white space here to get rid of that dialog box so there's how you can do some current measurements in a simple circuit using tinkercad's ammeter or uh, they call it a multimeter but we're measuring amps and then you can vary the current, as you saw, by varying the components in the circuit or by varying the power supply.